We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Getting the smile and confidence you've been dreaming about all from the comfort of your home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear Aligners. Just don't be surprised if all your friends start asking, what's your secret? Begin by ordering your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Welcome, everyone, to the Sickos Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of June 11th, 2024. Happy birthday, Dad. This is his birthday. Yay for him. I hope you had a good one. Uh, folks, if you'll notice, my voice is a little deeper than usual tonight. I am coming back from a cold. I wish it were like this all the time. Pick girl, what are you going to say? Say your snarky thing. You mean to tell me that this is not Sickos Committee with... Eugene Amore or something like that. After dark. After dark. It's it's so scratchy and weird. On the plus side, though, uh, I can hit some notes that I usually can't hit. Uh, swing low, sweet chariot. Really, really is working for me right now. I, d- I just like the idea of you as the rival to Corvallis Love. Mm-hmm. Now it's me. Now it's me singing in the shower with my glasses on, though. <laughs> We will get to that. I, this rival uh, FM radio station host, yes. Eugene Amore. <laughs> On the spicy midnight storm. Oh. Oh, spicy. Folks, <laughs> I am Jordan. With me tonight, I have Kamish, Pit Girl, guest Bridget, and Arthur on the ones and twos. Bridget, how are you? I'm good. I no longer live in a box maze, nice. which is great for me. Uh, I mean, the box maze is upstairs, but out of sight, out of mind. Shout out to ADHD. No, exactly. That's the best way to do it. Pit girl, how are you? It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Arthur, how are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm good. I mean, you're putting me on the spot. You know, I just saw a movie, and now I get to do this podcast. So, you know, that's that's my Tuesday right there. That's a hell of a Tuesday. Kamesh? Yeah, it is Tuesday. So, yeah, it's it's been a Tuesday. I've been fighting with the state of Colorado for my job. So uh, that's been fun. But otherwise, uh, it's it's been a great day. Dion, Kamish has it out for you professionally. No, I, uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's personal. He's coming to show you now. It's He's personal. Coming. It's personal. I don't know if I've ever said this on this podcast, but I like board games. Like, I'm a big board game fan. I have lots of them. Things like that. I don't, I don't I just, think you needed to say that. I just kind okay. of I think assumed. we just knew. Yeah, okay, I yeah. mean, it's just a safe assumption, I would say. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I found a board game that we should play as a group on YouTube. 
It is called Campaign for North Africa. Have you ever heard of this game? I heard of it today from our Twitter account. T- today I learned. Uh, yeah, like yes, two hours same, ago, I same, heard of yeah. this game, yes. It is sort of a legendary war game. War games are like the really complex kinds of games. Diplomacy is not technically a war game, but it is in that brand. Diplomacy is a game, listeners, if you don't know, that takes a long time, 10 to 12 hours to play, and can it really only be won by backstabbing your friends there's mm-hmm. no way to win honestly mm-hmm. so it has a history for destroying friendships now campaign for north africa is different it is about world war ii in the north african campaign like all good board games should be but no one has ever finished a game of this game because the game takes about theoretically 1500 hours to finish each round is about 10 hours long. And it's recommended that each side have four to five players because you have to have logistics and air and sea and land and front lines and you need a chain of command. This sounds like a job. Mm-hmm. It is a job. You could make it into a job very easily because 60 hours a week, you still wouldn't be done in a long ass yeah. time. So 15, 1,500 hours. I just yes. did some math. At 62 and a half days. That's without yeah, sleep. Yeah, I, I also did the math. Okay. <laughs> taking See, minutes from the rent song and then dividing by 60 to figure out how many hours there are in a year because we know how many minutes there are in a year. Oh, yeah, we there know you how go. many hours. And it's 8,760. Oh, that's so many. See, I was thinking of this in, okay, so it's 1,500 hours. And we're about two hours a podcast, so that's 750 podcasts. And we do we do about two podcasts a week. But a hundred a year. We'll call it a hundred a year. So we would have to do this we would have to play this game for the podcast and talk about nothing else for seven and a half years. (laughs) So basically until my oldest kid goes to college is what Uh you're saying. Yep. Got it. The best part about this game is because it was made to be pedantic. It was made to be annoying. And that's why they have things called, like, the pasta point. If you are Italy in this campaign, then your most of your food was dried pasta. So you have to have water for it. So you have to have an extra water for your for your troops or else they start rioting and shit. That is fiddly. Is a rule, I'm going to say. As far as I'm concerned, we're going to call that historically accurate. So apparently it's not. Because they would actually just boil the pasta in the tomato cans. They did have pot, dried pasta, but they would just boil it in the tomato sauce. Boo. Uh, yeah, apparently. The thing, the thing I saw about this is that, yeah, they just used the water in the pasta. But nobody wanted to make a rule. Like, we didn't want to make a rule for that. So we're making an extra rule. Just to be pedantic, because we fucking can. Because yeah, Bridget, the the thread you showed me was basically proved that the game was made for every asshole gamer out there who was like, "This isn't really, you know, realistic or fiddly enough." Did you get to the part where it's like, yeah, if you play more than ten hours of this game, you need to go touch grass? Mm-hmm. That's the designers. The designers said that. This game was the ultimate designers being like, fuck you. You want a really how accurate many, war game? How many how many pages were the rule book? 200. <laughs> An actual rule book. <laughs> a rule tome. A rule tome. Dude, you got to get you got to get it spiral bound or you're never going oh, no, yeah. to Oh, no. Yeah. That thing. Got to have it open flat. You want it flat. Yeah. yeah. I'm annoyed by this, like, and I'm not even playing this. I can tell. I, I'm, I, I'm, well, I'm very you the most? frustrated. Let's talk about this. What annoys you the most about this? It's just too much. Just, just a uh, game is supposed to be relaxing and. How fiddly can a game be for you before it really starts making your like making you want to throw things? Because I have a very high tolerance for fiddle. I, I like how you keep saying fiddly, and I'm like. Okay, so the term it's fiddly. The, right word. the term no, fiddly it is the, it is the game, correct term. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the, the correct term, fiddly, term, but it's, it's just funny. It's, it's lots of little. It's either lots of little pieces or lots of weird rules. Or there's there's a game that Alana and I like playing called Arkham Horror, which is a role play a cooperative role playing game where you're trying to take down 
this evil thing that's going to eat you eventually. And you're always going to lose. You may lose less bad one time, but you're always going to lose. And that game is fiddly because it has a ton of rules that don't play nice with each other. And you have to double check things. What does this actually mean? It has lots of little pieces. That's what I mean by fiddly. Those are games are fiddly. I mean, I think like the the most complicated game that I, I'd probably have played is is probably Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. Um, okay. And I mean, that can be depending on how much math you have to well, do. Well, I mean, like the the friends that I was playing with, they they really got into shopping. Uh, they were just oh, like, oh no, oh no, yeah. It was just like uh, it, like some sessions. It w- it was just like four hours of them trying to bother the shopkeeper oh, to buy specific oh. arrows, and I was just like, oh I, no, I'm I'm like, can I go? Let let's go. I mean, I, I want to roll. I, I don't want to just something? sit here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel I feel you there. <laughs> so it, it would get to that point. I'm like, eh. <laughs> then the dungeon master was just like, uh. No, no more arrows. <laughs> Moving on. I'm like, okay. But yeah, that stuff like that can annoy me. Like this is just too much. Like I don't I don't necessarily play uh games for incredible amounts of rules. I'm just like, okay, give me a game and go if I need like really specific rules. I I mean, I don't know. I I you kind of lose my interest soon if you start there's too many rules, you know. You get to like rule ten, and I'm like, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Hold, hold up, now that's that's a lot of rules. There, one of the games, Mitch really has college play. football for all his weird rule needs. Yeah. yeah, I do. I I love the weird rule book. I mean, like part thirty four, you know, two. And like I read like horrible, like we, we all like rule thirty four. I you know I went there, uh, but. I, I read very detailed things for my work. And so like when I'm off of work, I do not want to do I that. I get that. I get <laughs> no, that. Like, I do, that's not fun. There <laughs> is not fun. there is one there's one game I really like called Power Grid, and it has something like the rule book is set up like, oh, okay, in each turn there are three parts, and each part has four phases. And you have to go through each it's one of those, and that that makes Alana's brain just she goes no fuck this that's when it's for her it starts getting to be this is annoying it's too many things no i i'm fine with that because it is it's i mean i guess in the game it's kind of repetitive because the mechanics of each turn are similar but like where i'll tap out is when i am playing a game and this usually only happens in video games because that's usually only like the scale that you'll have it on right like it's just hard to have that scale in a board game but like if you build a really big city in like city skylines or something like that, and then you get to a point where it's like, damn, like this is just so much work. Like there's, yeah. there's all this stuff. I have to do so much like just the maintenance, the micromanaging, right? Like where you, you get to a point where it's just like, man, fuck it. I don't care. Like just build some houses over there. Like I don't want to zone yeah. another square. It's it like games where you can get a really big scale can can get t- like it's the same with any of those games where like you have an army like your army gets too big you get to a point where it's just like fuck like I, this is a lot of work. In game Civ is like that for me. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, same. I was literally My- waiting to be like, so we're talking about Civ, right? End yeah, we're talking like- we're talking about the end game in Civ when you put everything on automate and you're just trying to go to fucking space and be done. Oh, it's the worst. Like when you have when you tr- have to do something with like just huge armies. Like the huge armies are the worst because it's like oh, like you got so many different things and you got to all get them over here. And you know, even when you can like combine them together into like one big army, it's still like oh man, like just the logistics. And then you have your fleet somewhere else, and it's just like man, like I get. I I feel like it gives me a new appreciation for the Department of Defense, like. That yeah, that shit seems hard. I've often said that DOD does not get enough credit. Sicko's committee noted DOD appreciators. Um, on that note, I do feel obligated to shout out the fact that Civ Seven is evidently coming relatively soon, yeah. which means that I guess I should probably actually play Civ Six. It's for sale on Steam <laughs> right now. You can get it for cheap with. Yeah, oh, I own it. 
I don't okay. I don't know that I own the complete edition. I bought it at launch and then it sucked at launch <laughs> as, as oh, yeah. Civ games do. Mm-hmm. And I've just been playing five since college. So I look will forward probably to play five forever. Yeah. I I mean hell, I go back, I still play Office and Dory. That's based on Civ Two. Like yep. I still go back to that. Uh, can we can we talk quickly about my glasses shower update real fast? Do 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 breaking glasses shower news. On the last podcast, I admitted to taking a shower with my glasses on. This became a, a shower, thing. a shower, all sh- all every showers. shower, every shower, every shower since probably I was about eighteen, nineteen, maybe. Like okay, like I get it for going down the hall in the dorm. Yeah. That makes sense, mm-hmm. but having them on while in the shower, that mm, like. Living in Seattle, I hated wearing my glasses outside Oh, because, because get, like yeah. 10 months out of the year, I can't see because they're just covered in raindrops. doesn't matter how hard it's raining. Like I need the little windshield wipers that Slater had on his. <laughs> but I'm like, just, yeah, I just mm, like at a certain point, you have to just have things in places where you remember where they are so you can take your glasses off in the shower and just be free. Someone in the Discord suggested that I had bad proprioception, which is the sense of self being in space. And that's true. I am very bad. I hit things all the time. Yeah, I mean, I do too. And I have very bad, like, depth perception, which is why everything in the shower is always in the exact same spot. So even if I can't see what I'm doing, where where is that? Oh, it's right there. I got got some things for Jordan here. Cool. All right. So we're going to get him some Rain-X for his glasses. This rolls right (laughs) off. So, so the shower water rolls right off, just done. Just like, he doesn't have to worry about it. Like you just be taking a shower, just right, right off. Perfect. Okay. What else you got for me? <laughs> Someone suge- oh. So many people were suggesting like prescription goggles. First off, yeah, I want to say, listeners, thank you so much for almost every one of you telling me I'm insane. This is the hardest I've ever been dragged on Twitter, and I really enjoyed that my experience. Thank you. Thank you. No, oh, I, I, you know. Also, I, thank you, I everyone who dragged Jordan for vindicate, vindicating me because yes. he was convinced that I was the one that was crazy. Oh, all, but also, I also want to say thank you. Beth also isn't here tonight, but at last episode, I tried to bring Beth into it, but then she wasn't here. Going, I bet Beth would agree with me. Listeners, she did not agree with me. <laughs> she no. also thought she also thought I was insane. Mm-hmm. Do we have yes. some quotes from her? Oh, let's scroll up. They were they were very good. Scroll up in the chat. The gang scrolls up. The gang scrolls up inside our our breaking our never scroll up rule. Yeah. Oh. Uh yes. I forgot to ask, Beth, showering with glasses, yay or nay? Beth. Are you asking me if I wear my glasses in the shower? Me. Yes, that's what he asked he is asking you. Beth, are you high? <laughs> Uh, y- y'all, you know what? I'll take my licks here. I I laughed today because I got in the shower with my glasses on. Yeah. Walked out with them on. That took a picture. I was like, oh, my glasses are wet. That's weird. I love that this is what prompted you to have that realization. Not just every time you get out of the shower and you notice. ADHD like, is real is, rough. I mean, I mean, I get you know, it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Jeez. But I feel like I would notice if I couldn't see. Like, that's usually, but my problem is usually when I, like, don't have my glasses on and I wonder why I can't see. And then I realize I'm not wearing my glasses. Oh, yeah, 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 that happens. So, like, when you wipe your glasses that you have, right? I mean, you got to use a specific glass wipe. You can't just be using, like, the bath towel, right? I use t-shirt. Okay. Who carries the wiper? I I I don't know. I I buy glasses from Zenny and they come with a wipe. And so I just leave them everywhere. I should do that. Okay. I have a bunch of those. They're just around. Just dead okay. drops, yeah. So the the glasses wipes are all over the place, like the the dryer sheets that I use from the laundry just all along the house somewhere <laughs> for me. Yeah, I got one of my That's work me in chapstick. I should put one here. Yeah, it's just Actually. something that it's just like no matter how many times you pick up or you do laundry, you just find another dryer sheet randomly in the house. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some sports. We have the College World Series. Comma, yeah, we do. rest in peace to the Pac-12. The last vestiges of the Pac-12 got bounced out in the Super Regionals. Oregon and Oregon State are no more. Making this an ACC versus SEC baseball challenge. 
which is it's, it's exactly four and four, isn't it? It's four and four, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. So the four ACC schools are Florida State, North Carolina, Virginia, and NC State. Oh, the 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 Wolf. I think that's. I don't know how we do that. I that's what. But I do. but then the SEC schools are uh, Tennessee, Florida. I'm missing one. Georgia. Oh, no, Georgia lost to NC State. Oh, that's right. That's right. Texas A&M. Uh-huh. Uh, and the last ever SEC school to make it to the College World Series, the Kentucky Wildcats. Oh, that's right. It's their first time. So every other SEC school has made the College World Series, and Kentucky was the last one to do it. So then let's talk about, first off, interesting record this year in that – the schools that both the schools in the past, I think, ever maybe, to have both their men's and women's teams make the basketball final four and the college world series in the same year. Texas 2003, Louisville 2013, and NC State 2024. Damn. It is the year of the Wolf Pack. Man, Dave Doran, you really gotta get your shit together. That's what I'm saying. Their I mean, quarter scale tractor team won a championship. That's right. They got cheese. I think cross country won a title. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I mean, look, they NC won State, cheese wheeling. Yes, the most important. I I believed in NC State this year, and I said that they were going to be nine and three, and they did it. But I should have said they would get to ten wins, so they could have that Pop Tarts Bowl crown also. But um, is this is this are they having a better year than than our Mizzou Asans? I mean, Mizzou like, had the great football year, had yeah. the chess tourney championship. Yeah. I think that may be it. No, it, they it, have the they, their nuclear reactors biggest. Oh well, yeah, I mean NC State has one also. Oh, that's right. No. Shit. Yeah, but not as powerful because Mizzou's nuclear reactor is the most powerful. I I don't know. NC State is has been kind of you know amazing. Somebody was in the replies with like, well, Florida did this, 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 and this, and this, and I'm like, okay, we're fine florida you've done this stuff a lot like your men's team won back to back to back track titles it's almost kind of expected uh nc state's not necessarily a known power consistently i would say like not like a giant sec school um you know i know it's a big school but but still it's like an acc school that doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily known for being awesome all the time in everything, you know, uh, there was a time where Florida won the men's basketball title and yep. the football national title that, that happened. So, um, they've had Heisman winners too. So I, I mean, I don't want to like downgrade Florida or NC state, but that it's two different types of, of, of animals. I mean, that one's a gator and, and one's a pack of wolves. So LSU has the jello shot crown at Rocco's in Omaha with six, 8,888 jello shots. Jello shots are $5 a pop this year, again. I think they'll still be having those jello shot machines. But the question then becomes can any of these schools take down the LSU record? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Do not see that happening. Then, mm-hmm. then who do you think wins the jello shot challenge this year? Hmm. Kentucky fans have been saying that this is going to be them because it's their first time there. I feel like I feel like they go out to an early lead, and and then they just crash. There, they, I yeah, I think Kentucky fans are probably writing some checks that their ashes, their asses can't cash. Yep, yep. The spirit is telling me Tennessee. The only thing here is, in order to win this, you have to have tournament longevity. So you need to make it to the the next weekend, essentially, uh, or through the weekend to make it to the next, to get to the final four of this, and then essentially the championship series. So you need need that uh, to happen. And Kentucky's first time on the stage, not necessarily a guarantee. They are the number two team. Uh, Tennessee is the number one team. So, I, you know, Tennessee is one that I'm looking at. Kentucky's there. Florida didn't do much, and they were there last year, I believe. Yeah, uh, they, 
they really didn't hit hard. Uh, Virginia was there last year, and they didn't do much either. Um, I, I don't, I don't know, like. Florida State baseball fans. I know they like to have a lot of fun, tailgating wise. What about like football games? But you know. what about the oil money? What can I do to convince you that someone from A and M isn't going to show up and just drop a hundred k to say that they did? Yeah, that's that's what this comes down to now. Like, it's not it's not really about people like in the bar just like I'm going to buy some jelly. I shots swear to anymore. God, if you make this less fun, I'm going to be mad at you. Don't, I mean, don't make this less it fun. Is this what it's become? Like, it's it's less about the actual Jello shots now, and more about just someone who wants to put up a big number for their school. It's it's just it's basically like if you're familiar with the EDSPS Charity Bowl, it's just that. Except instead of helping people, it's Jello shots. Well, two points. Number one, as we have previously discussed on this show. You can donate a Jello shot to the food bank. Air quotes. Uh, don't donate actual Jello shots to the food bank, please. No. Um, but that does count, and it will get you credits on the Jello shot board. Um, and also, the um, the folks who run the EDSBS Charity Bowl do consistently point out to us that while Michigan and also Georgia Tech and some other schools have like large donors who engage in a wizard's duel, the vast majority of donors, even for Michigan, are donating in the like $20 range. So, you know, yeah. you could just have an army of people descend upon Rocco's and all buy four jello shots. Yeah. Yeah. So that's usually is... how it goes for the charity bowl is you have like a couple mega donors yep. and then everybody else just rallies the troops. So I will just say this. Uh, last year, there were two like LSU folks that, that came in. The owner of, of Raising Canes um, donated, uh, uh, basically bought 10,000 Jello shots. Uh, and then the infamous injury attorney um, that is, oh, that's that is right. part of the LSU NIL donated 8,888 8, uh, because that's basically his phone number, I believe. Uh, call Gordon. Uh, or get Gordon. I'm sorry. I got to say that right. And they donated. Basically, you just take off 18,000 of that total, like 18, you know. So essentially, LSU fans legitimately bought around 50,000 Jello shots, or uh, I would say. So, I mean, that's still a ridiculous that's number. A lot that's of still Jell-O a shots. lot. If you take away those big donations, there may have been some more donations. I may not have had uh, the accurate amount for that. But, you know, again, 68,888 um, Jello shots at $5 a pop uh, is, is 344,000. In Vietnamese dong, uh, oh, that, is, that is <laughs> 8 billion 767,000. 259. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Seven hundred. You went from billion, billion to thousand. Yeah, wait a second. Wow. All right, take two. Here we go. 8,767,259,999. Vietnamese dongs and jello shot money, right? There. Gonna, gonna have to say my usual phrase. That's a lot of fucking dong. I, I really love that video when you say that's a lot of dong and then your hands are waving. In the animation, that's a, it's like, oh, that's, that's so much that's fucking a lot dog. Of dog. Oh, hey. uh, I would like to take this moment because we did briefly touch upon the concept of a uh, Texas A and M oil man. Um, per Market Watch, West Texas crude is up thirteen, almost thirteen point nine percent. Hey, hey, okay. over last oh, year. Oh, oh Beth, there we go. We got money. So, for it then. Yeah. There's money. Can we can we talk about? The Nomad Bowl, the bowl that has want that's still wandering, looking for a date, looking for a place, no longer needs a place. The Holiday Bowl, the Direct TV Holiday Bowl, no longer the San Diego County Credit Union, one of my favorite bowl sponsors. The Holiday Bowl had been played. Do you remember where it's been played the last couple of years? Petco, at the San Diego Padres ballpark. Yeah. We love a baseball stadium. We, we do. do. Although there was a perfectly good football stadium they were not using in the same city. The Holiday Bowl will be going to the Aztec Stadium, San Diego State's place that is Snapdragon Park. It's the one without enough covering. Mm -hmm. I believe the first game everyone was passing out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The one that is designed to bake you to death in August. Yes. 
they were like, oh, when an MLS team moves in here, they'll they'll put the cover. <laughs> and just think, it used to be worse. Jack Murphy was, when it was, was beautiful. Because when it was the queue, it was all around. So no matter where you sat, you were baking. So I am, this is one that always has bugged me. I'm glad they're going to the stadium just because I, I love a ballpark state. I love, you know, guys know me. I love a baseball park bowl game. However, this one had been at Qualcomm, whatever you want to call it for so long and then got moved here because they, you know, there was no, that was the year San Diego state was playing their football games in uh, was it home Depot stadium, wherever the galaxy play. And so that's why that wasn't there. And I just, I'm glad this is back in San Diego at a football stadium. I know. No, no, I'm no, wrong. We gotta, I'm wrong. We got to be about the baseball stadium. I, we, I've heard that one. that's a really nice baseball stadium. And now I'm never going to get a chance to visit. Cause yeah, Petco, act, going Petco is probably my favorite stadium. park. Yeah, it's okay. it's downtown and San I, Diego, too. Yeah, right. That, yep. That's, and, that's yeah. the other thing I'll yep. say is like if I ever was going to attend this game, like as a fan, the baseball stadium is a lot more attractive to me just based on the location than where the football stadium is. Like, I feel like the football stadium is not where I would be as a tourist. OK, legit. Yeah, I nobody mean, goes think... to Mission Valley like willingly unless you live there or you're going to Ikea. I mean, I think that's sort of the same, like, driving force behind the pinstripe bowl, ultimately. Like, you can have this game in New York City, or you can have it in New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Legit. This is that. This is me. I'm I'm wrong here. I'm happy to be wrong here. I mean, we- I, I will also fully admit to just having a fondness for bowl games in stupid venues, as evidenced by the fact that I advocated for an outdoor bowl game at the Tiger Stadium in Detroit in December on our last episode and was right. just thinking about advocating for a bowl game in the trop now. Mm. Ooh. Back to the trop? What I if know. we yeah, why not? We had a we had a bowl game in the trop. It was But that's yeah. yeah. Put it back. Put it back. Or you have now, now there's two there's there's more there's two bowl games in Tampa at least. That's right. One With of them is Gasparilla. Be. Gasparilla. Yeah. You can move oh, one that's of them perfect. back over. Yeah, no, put the put the Gasparilla Bowl in the trop. Can yeah. you imagine that theme song that they had on the website playing, like, Larry. blasting over the Larry. speakers in the trop? Yeah. Oh, man. In, in some, I have some really crackly, shitty, some really mm-hmm. crackly, shitty speakers. That place just rocking because everybody's, like, five beers in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I need this to happen now. You see the vision. We got to get Beef O'Brady's back, if that's the case. That is true. The Beef O'Brady's Gasparilla Bowl. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> I mean I mean now it's what uh, Union Home Mortgage? Like come it's on. Now. It's it's lame. It's lame now. Beef O'Brady. Yeah, Union Home Mortgage, I think, has to be the worst, like not necessarily like a terrible company, but just like in terms of like being an interesting thing like, to say. For the theme? Rely Quest is also very bad. Well, I mean, I don't but know. That's mortgage the other people game. could be mortgage people could be quite predatory. Uh, no, I I I'm saying I'm saying for the, the Gasparilla Bowl. The Gasparilla Bowl. Oh is yeah. The least interesting one. You want not, you not want, like all bowl. You want like Captain just... Morgan's Gasparilla Bowl or yeah. Ooh. Well no, I'm I mean I'm just saying like compared to the historical, like we're talking Beefo Brady's, we're talking Bitcoin. Magic Jack, Bitcoin. we're talking Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Bad Boy Mowers, like all of yeah. these have been this bowl game. And so like Union Home Mortgage is like just a little too vanilla for me. Mm-hmm. This is how good and scammy college sports are. That college sports were on that Bitcoin shit way before anyone else was. Two thousand. Mm-hmm. Have we ever found the costume? No, never okay. did. We're still trying. Listener, to find. if you know where the Bitcoin costume is, we are interested. Very. That will be. We'll just repaint it. Oh, this is our. This is our crypto coin shill. Here we go. This is the Bitcoin costume. We'll turn it into the Bitcoin costume. Invest in Bitcoin. Can we talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes NASCAR? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to have to lean on Arthur here for a little bit. Uh, so I know there's there's a driver. His name is Corey LaJoy. Uh, it, it, yeah, fellow podcaster, Corey LaJoy. Fellow podcaster, Corey LaJoy. He is going to be uh, in the number seven Gainbridge Chevy uh, at Iowa Speedway this weekend. In a fully painted Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, is this the Xfinity Series, right? No, no. This is the NASCAR Cup Series. This oh. is the race is the 
I believe the Iowa corn 350 powered by ethanol. Okay. <laughs> nice. What else would it be powered I, by? I will say, I will say, I respect NASCAR for this, right? So, like, Iowa Speedway is already a short track, seven eighths of a mile. Um, you know, got a decent amount of banking, but still a short track. Um, kind of similar to Richmond, if you're kind of a NASCAR fan, um, you're more familiar with that track. But they repaved some of the track, but only like certain lanes. Right. Mm. Okay. So basically this is the first time that the cup series has ever raced at Iowa. None of the other NASCAR series have been there for like five years, like since the pandemic. So they decided they needed to do some resurfacing to get the track ready for the race, but they didn't want, they didn't do the whole thing. So in the corners, it, apparently they just resurfaced like the bottom lane. Oh, that's awful. Which oh, this means, is going to be real dumb. Which means the bottom lane is going to be like new pavement. It's going to have a lot of grip. And all of the other lanes, like the selling point for this track for Iowa is that it's a pretty, It's even though it's seven eighths of a mile, it's a pretty wide. So you can move around and make passes. So what does NASCAR do? They only repave the bottom lane. I think that's that's a way to say like, yes, we, we understand what Iowa is about that we're going to go and we're going to make some decisions to not have passing happen. Passing <laughs> can be very ineffective. Beautiful. And and I, I, I think that they really, they understood the assignment there. Mm-hmm. I would like to take this moment to appreciate this paint scheme in the context of other university paint schemes that I recall from my NASCAR watching days. Um, this one, for example, infinitely better than uh, the one from the university that shall not be named uh, from a driver that was attending the university that shall be not not be named. Uh, I also like recall like there I, at Talladega one year, there was an Auburn themed paint scheme. That one was cool. Liked that one a lot. That that seems like a very natural pairing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there there have been like through the years a number of colleges that have appeared on uh like coastal carolina sponsored an alum that feels very for a while. okay yeah um but it's it's interesting here because this is like a company that i'm not sure what their affiliation with iowa is i know gamebridge has a lot of stuff in the indianapolis area the pacers arena which is i guess also where the indiana fever play that is like they have the naming rights to that arena um, and they're big into motorsports as well, you know, Indiana based whatnot. So they're just kind of like as a company just doing that, which I think is cool. Um, that's one side of the that sort of relationship that you don't necessarily see quite as often as just a college directly buying sponsorship. Gotcha. Per. uh you slash reach for 24 a west virginia fan on rcfb four years ago uh an incomplete list of college nascar sponsorships include university's partnership with william byron driving one-off races with ecu and clemson dale earnhardt jr though driven by alex bowman because dale earnhardt jr had a concussion at the time had a michigan colored and sponsored car with exalta the hood sponsor jeff gordon has driven cars similar to the previous Michigan sponsor with Penn State and Texas A&M sponsoring. Brian Vickers drove a Florida State sponsored car after their 2013 national championship. Brian Vickers also drove a Louisville sponsored car after their 2013 basketball championship. Jamie McMurray won the race at Talladega in the Auburn sponsored car. Ooh. Clint Boyer drove an Alabama sponsored car after their 2011 national championship. Okay. There was a South Carolina sponsored truck in the truck series for a few races. And Ryan Blaney drove a VT sponsored car after the battle at Bristol or okay. in the same season as the battle at Bristol. Huh? I did not know any of this. Okay. Mm-hmm. There know. are also some more, there are some older ones in here. There was a Texas tech car in 2015, the coastal Carolina truck slash car. And there was a university of Richmond car at Richmond in I guess, tw- tw- or 2019 or so, because this comment is four years old. The spiders. Yeah, I was going to say, did it have a giant spider on the top? 
I hope so. Yeah, there's, I mean, the thing about NASCAR compared to like some other motorsports is there's 38 race weekends a year if you're in cup, fewer if you're in like Xfinity or trucks, but that gives you a lot of time to kind of play around with your paint scheme. So even if you have like a primary sponsor that does a lot of the, like GameBridge does a lot of races for Spire Motorsports. And so even though like, so they, they basically, it's like, yeah, like we're on the car a bunch. Like we can have time to play around with it, have some fun with it. Um, you know, I wonder if they have anything planned in the future like this, because, you know, I know they're big into sports in, especially in the Indiana area. So it'll be interesting to see if they have anything special for the Brickyard 400, which is coming back this year. Purdue, um, Purdue Pete's face on the hood of the car. Oh, oh God, see, that, yeah. that would be good. Uh, Purdue is actually like one of the few sp- sponsors on the Yunkos cars in IndyCar. Oh, where? Um, they have like a partnership there. The one, the one I remember um, that's not actually college football related because it was when Jim Harbaugh coached the San Francisco 49ers, but. The IndyCar team that Jim Harbaugh was a co-owner of ran a San Francisco 49ers car uh, at Sonoma that year. Oh, okay. You know, you know, guys, that I love weird logos. You know that I love, like, just weird shit in general, like type design. Kamish, were you the one that found this list? Yeah, it, it came across my normal timeline. Uh, and then I was like, okay, this is good enough for, uh, I, uh let, let's bring this to good the enough, committee. good enough. As in, as if there's like a quality line, like I can't pass this to the committee. It's not good enough. It, it I just, just read like, a Reddit comment. What are our standards? Uh, that was a very good Reddit comment though. If you're yes. listening, Reddit. I also read a Reddit comment earlier. So we're setting the bar real high this episode. Okay. Wait, Reddit said, what are our standards? Like us? No, no, no. The, the, the joke is that our standards are low enough that we're citing Reddit as a yeah. source. Oh, okay. That's okay. We, we don't have Next time time we'll be citing 4chan. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, <laughs> so would you prefer something awful? How about tech sags? Oh yes. <laughs> no, that's, that's stepping on message board geniuses territory. We can't do no, that. No, we're not doing that. Uh, not doing that at all. No, I saw this. It, it came across my timeline, uh, just like my personal timeline. It got retweeted into my feed, and I was like, wait, this is weird. And I'm like, hey, let's just bring this over to the committee because this is weird. And I'm like, it's kind of tangentially related to, like, college football because it's state-related. And when you get, like, into the states, you kind of have, uh, you know, an affiliation for, like, your state. And you're like, okay, this is, like, okay, this is my logo. Like, this is what I got to roll with. Like, so these are, like, the team. state... These are the yeah. list of state tourism logos. Yeah, state <laughs> tourism logos. And so I was like, hey, let's just throw this out there because the one that caught my eye right away was just like, let's talk Colorado. And I'm like, it, it sounds like Colorado's in trouble. Like yeah. they did something. Colorado, we we're, need to talk. We're staging an intervention. That's right. We need Colorado. to talk about Kevin, but it's Colorado. Yes. Colorado. Yes. Colorado, you've you've woken you've waked and baked. What woke and boked? Woke and boked. <laughs> woke and boked. <laughs> I mean, I think from a college football perspective, like in the past year, I think we've talked enough about Colorado, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, I, some would I, say too me. much. And some, some would, would say too me. much. That's right. So uh, I, so it's a list of these state tourism logos, and some of them include their little their little statement on there. So, you know, Virginia is for lovers. Yeah. So good. It's like a Kentucky, tourism. Kentucky unbridled spirit. Yeah. And some of these are not as good. No, not as good. Like my Pennsylvania's favorite... is out of date for the record. Okay. okay. What's, what's the update? So in Pennsylvania? Washington's the, yeah, the Washington is a beta one, version. <laughs> I will drop it in the chat, but for now I'm just going to hold my phone up. It looks like this and it says, oh. pursue your happiness. Okay. okay. It looks like it's in live, laugh, love font. Like I've, I mean, it kind of I've bought that font somewhere. Is, yeah. It's nice on the welcome signs when you drive back into the state. Although, as as real Pennsylvanians know, the true welcome sign is when you hit the hit the line and the pavement quality immediately goes to shit. That's how you know you're home. That's the one thing I respect about Ohio. 
like anytime I drive through Ohio, it's like, you know, I don't know what like Ohio must have just pushed all their money into like road maintenance. Cause I mean, you drive on their highways, like it's like, damn, like this is nice and smooth. And they got a lot of like they got an underrated amount of highways, right? Like when I went to see the eclipse, I was driving kind of through Oh, that's right, yeah. Like not necessarily like i wasn't just driving on the interstates and they still had just like a bunch of high i was like damn like there's another highway right here wow like ohio highways you're talking about like good highways and i'm like i'm just laughing about like louisiana because they're they're oh consistently yeah rated the worst and because the ground is like kind of moving still because it's still settling from all the water and it's yeah. just ridiculous as soon as like you get out of texas you hit the oh it's bad <laughs> it's real bad <laughs> and then there's a spot right outside lafayette which i think they were doing some repairs on but there was a spot right outside of lafayette right when you get off of the uh chafalaya basin bridge uh yes i said that really quickly for you and it, it was just like choppy it was just like and every time i was driving i drive with my wife back uh new orleans and san antonio it, like she she'd fall asleep while, while driving and then we hit that wham <laughs> like oh oh god oh god we're in lafayette again <laughs> some of my other favorite ones here on this list i like it must be maine like <laughs> like i, I related like, that like, to a, like, fuck, like a fucked up child like oh it must be maine it's maine man what did you do again oh right, it's it, it reminds me of like a michael buble song Mm-hmm. You know, like if you, you have that sing song equality to it, it must be Maine. also also <laughs> it's it, it's also yeah. it's like it's in Helvetica or pretty close to it, so it just looks like it should be some clothing company now. Mm-hmm. It must mm-hmm. be Maine. My other That's favorite me. one: South Carolina is smiling faces, beautiful places. Yeah. While South Dakota is great faces, great places. Good because Whoa. I had a question of which one came first because South Whoa. Dakota's has been the same since I lived there. Whoa. In the late nineties and early two thousands, like it has not changed, and I have to wonder when South Carolina adopted theirs. It feels like they cribbed. It feels like they looked off the uh, South Dakota's test. I do feel morally obligated to step in on Beth's behalf here as well and point out that the West Virginia one is also out of date. Okay. Um, I think that one's like two logos ago, actually, because I recall the like wild wonder, wild comma wonderful West Virginia logo and the current logo i have put in the chat and it is in a different live laugh f- live laugh, oh laugh, it laugh, is laugh yep. in pennsylvania's uh-huh. why are these all so awful i kind of like pennsylvania's don't at me L- louisiana's I- is, west virginia's is, has a good font louisiana's got a new one i believe um oh, so this is all wrong fuck it i'm not to make yeah. a new yeah. one of these but yeah basically we're gonna have to fine, do that fine. Again. i'll fucking make a new one of these because louisiana's new one it's a it's like a it's it's kind of a french one uh and it says it's like louisiana and it's like feed your soul with alligator that's, that's frightening the My louisiana one that's on here right now looks like it's from a true crime show from the 90s what the fuck it could be was it was it True Detective season one in New Orleans? I don't know. Oh yeah, it was. It wasn't New Orleans. No, no, no. Was... I'm picturing Louisiana. like a like to like to catch a predator kind of thing with the oh, like, oh okay the narrator who talks like this. It's the you wouldn't download uh like the uh-huh. anti downloading like you wouldn't download a car font. You wouldn't download uh, a vacation. Yeah, you wouldn't download whatever. <laughs> That's that font. That's you gotta that say font. that in Cajun though. You wouldn't you wouldn't download a vacation. <laughs> you wouldn't download a state tourism board okay i found an old Rhode Island one that just calls it cooler and warmer sure sounds great i'm not sure what that means Rhode Island you're not even big enough to have two temperatures <laughs> i do i do just want to shout out Delaware i wonder what their weather report is like it's like Rhode Island it's like here's the whole state every time it's the weather map Again, Sorry about Delaware. Oh, no, you're fine. Visit Delaware. That's all it is. It's the <laughs> hi, I'm in Delaware of state tourism. Yeah, the, the Wayne's World. This is the hi, I'm in Delaware. <laughs> what is it I do not one? acknowledge Delaware. It's not real. No one should. 
Of course, my friend from Delaware is going to come at me after this, but that's fine. It's the, the rogue three tell counties. Your friend from Del- tell your friend from Delaware that they should come back to Pennsylvania. Yeah, he he wants to. <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, I mean the whole no. state, air quotes. Yes. Oh, yeah, he would be into that 100%. He'd rather claim Philly than Delaware. What's what's, what's, what's the Greek term, enosis? This is what Cy- the Cypriots used to want. They want enosis with Greece. You have people, sleeper agents <laughs> in Delaware who want reunification with Pennsylvania. They could make it Delaware happen. Delawareans learn, yearn for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. What's interesting to me about all these like state tourism logos here is like just how few of them are recognizable to me. Like yeah. there's maybe a handful on here that I actually am like, oh yeah, like I actually recognize like the Mississippi that. with the interlocking S's. I've seen that everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The Michigan one's famous, one. the Georgia one's famous, and obviously yeah. I Heart NY. Yeah, I think honestly the only the ones that I'm like, oh like that, like I recognize that are Michigan and New York. And Georgia, like, if you've watched stuff. And Georgia, yeah. Georgia, Georgia Georgia has I they I only recognize that because they have the logo at the end of things that have been filmed in Georgia and gotten yep. tax credits, which yep. is like everything somehow. Yes. I I I feel like I know these because like the, there would always be commercials on the Weather Channel for some of these states. Yeah, like I get ads for California all the time, especially when my kids like, watch it. Just I yeah. I would I would get like pounded by the Weather Channel, like pure Michigan. And I'm like I'm like okay, fine. I'll, I'll I'll go to Michigan, and have a outdoor bowl game at Comerica Park. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll we'll hire Neil Diamond, and he'll sing "We're Coming to Comerica." Yeah, the Pure Michigan logo they had like that's part of the track signage at the IndyCar race in Detroit. Um, but yeah, it's it's I'm just kind of I'm kind of amazed at how few of these I like actually recognize and think of. Maybe it's because like there's just other symbols for the states that get used more. Like this is this looks to me like it's just specific like tourism yeah. word stuff. So as so probably for a lot of these it's just that like that's just not what they put. Like there's a Mar- Maryland symbol that I recognize like crazy. It's just not that one. No. I, mean, I mean that one looks very much like the welcome signs, at least the ones that I see for Maryland. Um and the updated Pennsylvania one and even that old Pennsylvania one was also on like the welcome sign. A lot of them, not all of them. So, mm-hmm. but if you're like someone like from Texas, like me, who never leaves their state driving because it's so goddamn far either direction, I never yeah, see the welcome it, signs to it's, states. It's hard to get out of the state. It it really is. I, so I, 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 I would have no clue what Oklahoma's would look like because I'm like I don't drive there. I think the easiest thing for me is probably to go to Mexico. Like, you, I, what I, does I just, Mexico's welcome sign look like? Let's see. Let's see what Tamalibas looks like. Bienvenidos. Uh, I mean, I also would say there there's some of these where I could guess. Like if if this was like uh like a sporkle quiz that had like the actual like name of the state blurred out. Like there's like I could guess South Carolina's because of the, the like the tree thing. Palmetto, yeah. The palmetto, yeah. But I could I like I wouldn't say that like that specific logo is something I'm rec- like I'm just recognizing an element in the logo. New Hampshire's is super New England as an aside. Like that little church is aggressively New England. Yeah. I mean, also, New Hampshire's is like, you're going to love it here, which, like Kamish said, sounds vaguely like a threat. It does. They I say mean, that, again, and then you don't. Their that motto feels is their motto especially is threatening from the live free or die state. That, yeah. That's what I was about to say. I was like, their motto is live free or die. Like, you're going to love it here. This It just reminds me of the movie of Get Out. <laughs> Also, Massachusetts also being bold with it's all here. <laughs> it's all, all of here. it. It's all here. It's all, all I, of it. I've been there. No, it's not. I'm sorry, Massachusetts. Of, it's not Massachusetts. It's all here. All of the Asa oh, and yeah. Massachusetts. You don't have sheets. Ergo, no. it is not all there. <laughs> no Bucky's in in Boston that we know of. <laughs> Bucky's Boston Bucky's is such an amazing thought. <laughs> so cursed just I mean, aggress- massachusetts- aggressively massachusetts buckies oh my god Isn't there's somehow still the a duncan like dunkin in the donuts. buckies there's a duncan inside the buckies yes yeah. that would happen it's great like the duncan density there is crazy like, i nuts. went there like a couple years ago for a wedding it's crazy no, it's, how it's many- real 
Duncan's there. Like, I thought, I thought, like, okay, like, Duncan's got a good footprint in Pittsburgh, right? Like, there's one, like, a few mm-hmm. blocks from me, no, and then, no. like, the next neighborhood over, there's another one. Like, man, like, I was driving to this wedding, and I just, like, just for fun, I was, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count how many Duncan's I did. It was legit, like, every few blocks, there's another one. Like, it's, it's crazy. I miss that. Yeah. I've mentioned on the show a couple times before that my parents live in Western Massachusetts now and I helped them move. And when I helped them move, we went to BJ's to get gas. Mm -hmm. And when we did this, I saw a woman go the wrong way, like go the wrong way through the parking lot, not a care in the world. And this is like big, like shopping center parking lot where it's kind of like real traffic. And she's just out here, like going the wrong way, not thinking about it. And then we go inside the BJ's and there's a Duncan inside it. That's Massachusetts. That's all yeah. you need to know about Massachusetts. I miss it. I miss you, Massachusetts. I miss you so much. I miss you having to take my fucking passport to bars because they wouldn't I, take an out-of-state license for driver's license. I got, Isn't I got, the happy hour illegal in Massachusetts, too? It is. It is. My, I'm still laughing at my dad. Like We went to Fenway for a game. And so no matter your age, you have to show your ID mm-hmm. f- to get a beer, no matter your age. And, you know, my dad living in New Orleans where you're allowed to take to-go cups uh just like cannot believe this is happening to him i'm like are you serious like look at me i have the hair that i have is gray on the sides and, and <laughs> just like he's just and then there's a bunch of boston people back come on <laughs> hurry up yeah. boston boston bucky is yelling aggressively boston, boston the buck the boston bucky the beaver <laughs> oh canadians would love him we should put one in fucking montreal aggressively french bucky Okay, now now I like this idea more. Bucky in a beret. We put a Bucky's outside Montreal. It's gonna go over like fucking gangbusters. Just Bucky with a Bucky with a cigarette, and a beret. Well, you can't Bucky, Bucky Poutine. With the station. Bucky Poutine. I I, I mean Ooh. I do think like at some point if we get international Bucky's, we'll have to contend that like all the international Bucky's are better. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just like McDonald's overseas has better yeah. food yeah. than McDonald's yeah. here. Oh, yeah. do- the Bucky's in Doha is going to be absolutely pristine and amazing. I'm stuck on Bucky's the size of Rhode Island. Oh, Bucky's yeah? has taken over the entire state of Rhode Island. It's an improvement. This is how do we lobby for this to happen? All is yeah. Bucky. The, All the belongs brown, to the Beaver. Brown University yeah. becomes the uh, the Brown Beavers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Bucky's University. God train Bucky's, Bucky's people University. somewhere. Bucky's makes it as an Ivy League school. <laughs> can't kick us out now. I can't kick us out now. You know the ancient eight. You know Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Bucky's, Dartmouth, Cornell. <laughs> oh, where'd that's you so get good. a degree from? Bucky's <laughs> University. Bucky's in, Bucky's in Rhode I was Island. there when it transferred over. I couldn't change my degree. I couldn't change. <laughs> They wouldn't let me use the old name. Okay, let's do ad reads. <laughs> Check out our link tree on our Twitter, Instagram, and Blue Sky profiles for a lot of folks that we have affiliate links with. Use those codes to sign up for things. We also have our Patreon and our Discord. The Patreon is for $5 a month. You get access to our Discord, which gets you access to our chat with us during the weeks, talk about through live games, things like that. We also have lots of hollering about all sorts of stuff. There was lots of F1 hollering this weekend. The Canadian Grand Prix was so much fun to watch because it was an absolute fucking shit show. Two Ferraris out, baby. Two Ferraris out. They were not happy. Uh, We also have, so yeah, we have our Discord. It's a lot of fun. If you go for our Patreon, you also get access to our paywalled Substack posts. We'll have a couple of those. And also our three different podcasts, our Patreon podcast, Commission's Corner. Yes, rah, 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 yes. And the Prairie View Chronicles this week, episode four or five. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's episode five. Okay, a Prairie View Chronicles is coming out. Yeah. I should be recording episode six tomorrow night, unless something comes up. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to finish this because there's still a lot to come uh, for this Prairie View streak. 
there, there will be the fourth head coach that we discuss. <laughs> and uh, there's some drama in 1998. I'm just going to leave it at that. And it involves uh, Jordan's favorite um, hobby, uh, the band. Oh, yeah. Also, Beth and I do Yes, Ra 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 Yes, which is our marching band music podcast for our patrons. This last time we covered Iowa's fight song. And this next week, we are covering the classic on Wisconsin, the history around it, and what else it gets used for. Every high school. Yes. Every high school, including my alma mater. Two of my jobs have had on Wisconsin as a fight song. We have our merch store at singlescommunity.org. We've added some stuff to it, including our Pride Month merch. All the stuff for Pride Month will be, all the profits are going directly to the Trevor Project, so that's great. We have our YouTube channel. We have our Instagram. We have our Substack, where Commission just has been working on the best season of all time for teams who stop having football teams. And Northeastern is done. And special guest author, author, special guest author Pit Girl, has her RIT one coming out soon. Yeah, Finally, that'll be coming out. That'll be coming it only out. took me three months. I'll be coming out next week. Uh, the Northeastern one, I'm gonna let it go out on, uh, I guess tomorrow Wednesday. So. By the time you hear the podcast, it'll be out for a day. So uh, free with email sign up. That's all you got to do. Read it. Um, I've I've been in contact with uh, the school that played the final game of the best season uh, against Northeastern. Mm-hmm. And their library has gotten back to me. And they may have some memorabilia. So I may do a separate post for that. So uh, shout out to uh, uh, whatever. It's coming out on Thursday. East Carolina. Uh, oh, yeah. They played East Carolina in, in something known as the Eastern Bowl, which was unfair for Northeastern. And East Carolina played each other in the Eastern Bowl. Uh, now I'm just putting that together. I don't know why I missed that before when I was writing this. <laughs> but um, it was it was a bowl game in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh, shit. Formerly, <laughs> known, as, form, formerly known as the Cement Bowl. But yeah. then they changed the name in 1963 to be called the eastern bowl i don't know if they did that because northeastern and east carolina uh but then it ceased to exist after this uh it was 28 degrees and in mid-december beautiful bowl game in allentown um that was it was fun to uncover and i'm still pulling at the thread so if i get more i'm probably gonna do a separate post on the eastern slash cement bowl Oh my god, this was played at the high school football stadium. That's amazing. It was. It was. I mean, this 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 game is insane. If I get the program that East East Carolina their library said they have, I'm going to do a separate post and just yeah. post nothing about just everything about this game. So. Thank you every college library out there who's been dealing with all of our requests for the last 2 years for <laughs> random like, stuff. It's it's weird. It's just like, "Hey, I am a uh, you know, I, I bugged two lanes library, like they're almost out of research library for stuff to get the swack media guide for episode five of the Prayer View Chronicles. So I mean, just like I'm I am researching hard. So I appreciate your comments on the Patreon. And so that like, you could tell that you're really doing research. I'm loving every moment of this. Like the more that I pull at these threads and go down these uh you know rabbit holes on my like, Google that sucks now. Uh, uh, and like, just keep diving and, and, and digging further and further. Like I found crazy Idaho state helmet today randomly. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fun. Check extra special. Yes. And extra special thanks to whichever archivist scanned and uploaded every page of every issue of the RIT reporter for basically forever when it was a print magazine. Yes. Um, and also to random people on eBay who have like programs and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, Cause a program from 1972 homecoming that was, is, was, and is still for sale on eBay uh, was my best source about very early RIT football. Cause there was an article inside it. So shout Beautiful. out to that person. Shout out to message board geniuses podcast. They go to the places that we refuse to go. Because my therapist keeps telling me I don't need to do that to myself. Don't, and lastly, do Sickles Committee and Homefield Apparel, the softest, comfiest, officially licensed clothing for all your university and college needs. Use offer code yes, ha ha ha, yes, that's three ha's, for 15% off your first order. That's also, right. 
We have Pepperdine coming out this week. Yep. Just had their they just had their you see Santa Cruz Bananas Club gear drop. Got Pepperdine this week, and then all those yeah. things going forward. They had some awesome dad hats too that that uh, dropped for the College World Series, like the Aces yes, hat. Did. I'm still looking at that Aces hat. I probably should get it uh, at this point. I keep staring at it, but uh, they dropped. I think Florida State like smoky on the hat, like the strutting smoky on the hat. Oh yes, and then the slobbering wolf for NC State. Oh my god! Like I don't I don't wear hats that much, but I'm gonna have to start wearing hats more. Thank you, Homefield. Those were the two that I was looking at buying specifically. Oh my god, was the Tennessee because I, like, oh. I I have the tank top with the strut and smoky on it. And then I was there's like, you get the hat. There was another. Me. There was another two schools. I think A uh, and M were they were mad that they weren't included. So sorry, A and M. It's okay. Explore the endless bounds of space with all new Lego building sets from engineering wonders like Lego Technic NASA Apollo Lunar Roving Vehicle to astronaut dog walkers, there is a perfect Lego set for everyone on Earth. First launched in 1978, space sets have been igniting people's curiosity through the ultimate creative medium of Lego bricks. Their newest collection is sure to propel the wonder for exploration and adventure across the galaxies. Be inspired by Lego sets that are out of this world. Visit Amazon.com slash Lego space to see the full collection. And then, well, other, I mean, other things to talk about. So, and then we did, you know, after, after this members of this committee decided we're all going to go to the backyard brawl this year. Yeah. We knew that there was a pirates game that night it was going to be confused. Like, going to be a little bit of a mess, but they fixed mm-hmm. it. Right. Pick girl. What did they do? Oh yeah. This is so much better. Um, co- context for those of you who are not intimately familiar with the North Shore of Pittsburgh, uh, PNC Park and Akershire Stadium, which I will pronounce as Heinz Field for the rest of this conversation, are um, relatively adjacent to each other. They're in walking distance of each other and they share event parking along with the Carnegie Science Center and the casino. And there's also just like random gravel lots everywhere and you can park under overpasses and like all of this. So generally the pirates and big pit games try to schedule in a way that will not make everyone who is trying to attend either of these events miserable. The backyard brawl has already been announced to be kicking off at 3.30 on Saturday, September 14th. When this was announced, the Pirates were supposed to have their first pitch go out at 6.40 p.m., which is not ideal, but it's fine. It's the late season, Pirates. It's probably not, like, I would love for it to be a well-attended game. It's not going to be. We could only be so lucky as for the Pirates to not suck by this point in the season. And so it was going to be fine. But the Pirates, in their infinite wisdom, have decided to improve the situation, read, assure parking for the five season ticket holders that are going to show up for this game, by moving the game forward to 1.05 p.m., thereby raising a million questions about what time tailgate lots will open, where you'll be allowed to park, and other such concerns that I haven't even thought that hard about because I will likely be staying with someone who lives in walking distance of the stadium anyway. Someone said in one of our comments was like, well, you know, that's still an hour and a half before kickoff time. Who's going to be at the brawl tailgate lot an hour and a half, more than an hour and a half before kickoff time. They're going to be sleeping out there. Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. I mean, so like, I mean, I'm, I'm, a season ticket holder for Pitt, and I have season parking. I have a parking pass, and the lots for every game open five hours before the, before the game. This is for the the like official lots that are sold by both the University of Pittsburgh. These are also the same lots are sold by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know how this is going to work because for this day, they have basically like. There's, there's no way they don't have double sold parking because they've sold at the very least, they've sold parking to Pirates season ticket holders and pit football season ticket holders mm-hmm. like me. And so I think that it does kind of make sense to have the Pirates game first because they won't have any like they will. They will a PNC Park holds like half the people that Heinz Field does, but b like the probably have a smaller crowd 
right? So, like... I should hope so. I should hope so. If you had the pit game, people parking first, like, all the parking would be full. Mm -hmm. And this way, like, at least maybe theoretically, like, the Pirates won't use up all the parking, and then there will still be some parking, but I think there's still going to be, like, people who have parking passes. And I'm not sure how that's going to work. You know, maybe... I hope I don't have to find out, you know, because like I said, like I've already paid for my parking pass and, you know, they try to come at me with saying I can't tailgate five hours before every single game. You know, I might may have to start making phone calls and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like at the end of the day, the biggest problem kind of is hit having the game at three thirty because like. There, like knowing that there are going to be two events, like three thirty is like just in like kind of that wrong time. It's the worst. Where, like, it's the worst time you could have chosen. It's yeah, yeah, and it's. I mean, this is just another consequence that you know schools are more than happy to give up all scheduling to TV networks, and you know, hey, at least, at least they get to know the time of this game months in advance, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I love it when. I'm at a pit football game and they're like, Hey, come to our next game. We don't know the time yet. It's like two weeks from now and we don't know the time yet. And that, that drives me crazy. It's, it's, it's dumb, but like what would make the most sense is like for pit to play in the evening, right? Like if Pitt had like a seven o'clock or an eight o'clock kick, then the pirates could play at like noon and they could like those fans could be out before the pit fans, the the, the backyard ball people coming in. But you know we got to give it all up to the TV networks, and and they know best. So you know, well, this raises some questions for me also, such as does this mean that the lots will be opening five hours before the Pirates game opens? I bet so. Mm, this seems like a bad idea if you do not want uh shenanigans because that gives you an extra two hours that gives, uh, well that gets my, you my guess yeah my guess would be that they would uh they would not they would like you wouldn't be able to get in with a pit parking pass mm. if you, like they might let you in with a pirates parking pass i don't know my current plan i'm i'm showing up at 10 30 and you know i'm showing up to my lot and you know they can figure it out yeah the, I mean, I will say that I think it, it is truly impressive that this has happened twice now for major rivalry games for Pitt because the uh, when Pitt Penn State came back in 2016, that game was a noon game because the Pirates were not willing to move, and the Pirates sucked in 2016. You could just you don't have to say what year it is. I just know that's a fact. No, well, so no, 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 because this was like shortly after that, the like the wild card game and stuff when the Pirates sucked slightly less. Uh (laughs) Well, and I will also say, like, I mean, another thing is like they they shouldn't be playing the backyard brawl when it's baseball season. This is a They shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't be doing that. But again, hey, TV network says so, you know, got to do what the TV network wants. So anyway, y'all have fun out there with parking. I'm that's excited. gonna be a time oh, i'm excited i and my and my man i love pit moms no whatever <laughs> what's my sure gonna say not man i, I love pit moms. I heart Art. pit moms i just made up a milk shirt <laughs> i think the i think the hotel that i i got is close enough <laughs> to the clemente bridge to walk over yeah but um i will have my my kiddo so i don't know if i'd want to do that though you, but, you can rent a, a lime scooter yeah could. with my kid yeah okay we may do that that'd be fun i'll bring his no, helmet I, and knee pads i really want a man i love pit, <laughs> I want, man i love pit moms milpums what does it stand for man i love pit moms milpum milpum milpums <laughs> i'm gonna be that guy uncomfortable i'm gonna be that guy i'm just right. i'm genuinely just enjoying this and i'm also like imagining like kamish and his Little kid. Yeah, I mean, me on the scooter. And remembering when my sister used to take me on her scooter, like an actual like scooter scooter, like a Vespa looking thing, but she would have me sit basically in the footwell. Yeah, I'm not doing that over a bridge with my kiddo. The I don't. 90s. I, you know, I don't think so. 90s were fun. 
The, Cl- uh, the Clemente will be closed because there's a Pirates game. True. Actually, is the Clemente even open? Like, because it's been closed. I, I, I have not been down there for a while, right? Because, like, it's the Pirates, so why would I go down there? Yeah. But, uh, like, they were doing some pretty serious renovations there that necessitated a whole bunch. That's why they had to move the Pickle Festival over to, like, Market Square in that area. I think um, it's open now. I swear to God I drove over it the last time I was in Pittsburgh because I missed a turn off 279, as you do. Yeah, I when it's not pit football season, I'm not around those parts. <laughs> there's there's not a lot there. Google says it is open. There you go. Do we want to talk about competitive eating news? Always. Uh, yes. Joey Chestnut yes. banned from the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. Because he is sponsored by Impossible Wieners. Shout out to Butcher I'm sorry, for the what? graphic. Yeah, the Impossible graphic wieners. the graphic that just it has a picture of Joey Chestnut stuffing his his gullet with Nathan's hot dogs and, and the words on the bottom it just says banned. <laughs> There's just just nothing else. It just It has to do with it has to do with on. like licensing rights and of things course. like that. No no no. So so here here's what it is. Here's what it is. And this is the same reason that uh, Kobayashi stopped doing the hot dog contest is that um, the the people who run the hot dog contest want exclusivity, right? Like you can't be doing if if you're doing other tube to meat bodies you eating can't, contests, you can't they, dilly like, dally around you. with other wieners. No. But other tube right. meats, no more tube right. meats for you. Right. No, it is but it's not just other two meats. Like they don't they they do not look favorably to you doing like other eating contests. Like you have to do their eating contests. Yeah. And you know, historically there have been very few competitive eaters that have had enough fame where that actually becomes an issue right, right. like they the, the major league eating is the sanctioning body because of course it is uh they have a lot of leverage over most of the competitive eaters in that there's not a lot of competition for competitive eating i don't want to say services but like it's not like they've had a lot of pressure where they've had to do it the only guy who's been like big and famous enough for it to actually make it make it a big deal that stopped being sanctioned by them is Kobayashi. Right. Right. That And so now Joey Chestnut is not going to be there. And I think that's like, I, it's, we're going to see how that works. Right. Because when Kobayashi left, like Joey Chestnut had already ascended yeah. and we were kind of deprived, you know, like more of a rivalry between them, but like major league eating had their new face that they could kind of promote the sport with. And like, I really don't know who's going to replace Joey Chestnut. There's not another person ready right now. Right. Right. Like it's going to be, I mean, I don't know. I think you could see a situation where it ends up just being really embarrassing when like the winner this year only eats 45 hot dogs. Oh, and it's way significantly lower than Joey Chestnut. Right. Right. Because like no one has, no one has been able to, I mean, I think he's won what the last eight contests and it has now, it has not been close. Um, there was like one year, like nine years ago, like one year someone beat him and outside of that, like no one's touched him. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work for major league eating, how this is going to work for the Nathan's famous hot dog contest, because, you know, they're kind of in uncharted territory. Like they haven't, they haven't had to do an event where they're missing a big, the big star like this. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how much leverage Joey Chestnut has, right? I mean, so one of the things that they pointed to, right, is that, like, like we've been very, the Major League Eating, when they put out their statement, they were like, yeah, like we've been very flexible working with Joey Chestnut. And, like, we even allowed him to do uh, an, uns- like an unsanctioned hot dog eating thing for Netflix, where it was, like, unbranded. So like, right. So it, like gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. a hot dog, it wasn't another brand of hot dog. It was like, we just, we let him do an unbranded one for Netflix. That wasn't us. And like, that was, they, they were, they put out their press release and they clearly thought of that as like being a big, being uh, super nice to him. Favor to him. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it reminds me a lot of like 
the NCAA pre NIL yeah. mm. in terms of like trying to be really restrictive, trying to say like, okay, like, you know, you can't do these endorsements. You have to go, everything has to go through us, that sort of thing. Um, and, and doing it purely because a, they can and b because that is more profitable for them. Yeah. That's a good point. So, I mean, I don't know like what the resolution of this is going to be. I don't know if, if major league eating is going to back down. Oh. Um, I don't think Joey Chestnut's going to back down because, no. like, he doesn't really – he doesn't need to. Yeah, why I mean, would he? He's got $1.2 like, million from whatever dollars. Right, right. The the Vegan impossible wieners are paying him far more than the hot dog contest would pay yes. him in terms of, like, his appearance fee. Um, and he's big enough now, I think, that, like, he doesn't need to keep doing it every year to have people know who he is, right? Like, How much does it cost to get Joey Chestnut to come to your thing and eat something? I don't know, Does but Joey it Chestnut has to be cameo? like. Nah, but I, I, but what, I want to come to my restaurant and eat something. I make yeah. I make the best fucking jalapeno pop. I'm into Amarillo. Um, oh, no, I, the um, has he done the, that but, before? I think he has. I I don't know, but like so the way like he he can make he can just cash checks by showing up somewhere and eating something, right? Like Ooh. that's that's his his whole his whole thing right now. So he doesn't really need major league eating. And I feel like Major League Eating kind of needs him yep. still. Like, there's there's no yep. one there to sell this as actually being a, a event that people want to pay attention to. So, um, yeah. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen, but um, that's kind of what what's happening. So so j- just to reiterate, like it's it's not like I mean I don't put any of this on Joey Chestnut. I don't think that any of this is like no nah, man get your bag. He's yeah. he's the one like. No, like this is, you know, major league eating trying to hold a hard line. Um, I do. I, I will read Joey Chestnut's statement here uh, that he tweeted uh, four hours ago. Quote, I was gutted to learn from the media that after 19 years, I'm banned from the Nathan's July 4th hot dog eating contest. I love competing in that event. I love celebrating America with my fans all over this great country on the 4th. <laughs> and I've been training to defend my title. To set the record straight, I do not have a contract with MLE or Nathan's, and they are looking to change the rules from past years as it relates to other partners I can work with. This is apparently the basis on which I'm being banned, and it doesn't impact the July 4th event. Sadly, this is the decision Nathan's and Major League Eating are making, and it will deprive the fan, the great fans of the holiday's usual joy and entertainment. So my fans, I love you and appreciate you. Rest assured that you'll see me eat again soon. Stay hungry. I love this. I love every bit of that statement. All, That's so good. All caps. Stay hungry, my friend. That is so, it's so, uh, I love America. I love hot dogs. The most hungry man in the world. I love my fans who love, love my coming fans, out and watching love my, me stuff hot dogs my, down my gullet. Love my God. Did, love my country. He, he did, by the way, do the Big Texan Steak Ranch Challenge. Uh, the ribeye steak uh, salad. Baked potato, shrimp cocktail, and roll in just eight minutes and fifty-two seconds. Woo! Okay, Lord uh, above. However, there the overall human record is four minutes and woman. eighteen seconds, set by Molly Schuler. Um, if you look at if you look her up on YouTube, it is frightening how fast she eats the steak. Like that unhinges, like unhinges her jaw. Yeah, like, I was no, say, watching like, a fucking I, python. Like can, can we can we just it's, back up for a second? Nuts. Can we just back up? You said human record. Human yeah, like, record. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love also like, like someone's to just like further. No, got their dog in. No, no. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, Joey, you're just positing that Joey Chestnut is a cryptid at this point, right? I no. Can we just, can we just no, read, the, no. read, read what the animals are. That's right. There's animals. <laughs> I love this. No, what, read what they are. Read what they are. They're great. What? I'm sorry. I lost the Wikipedia. <laughs> God damn it. I it well, while Kamish pulls those back up, I just want to jump back a little bit further because we did not unpack the fact that Joey Chestnut is sponsored by Impossible Wieners enough. Yeah, I, I have um, their statement and I'd really like to read it. Impossible Wieners. I mean, I just, I just want to say that I, I thought Impossible Wieners was what you buy off of Bad Dragon. <laughs> God. <laughs> not a sponsor. Could be. Bad dragon really call us. Be. Bad dragon call us. <laughs> Wait. Where... Oh, I I meant of impossible wieners, not us. Commish, do not Google that. No, Commish, I want you to Google bad dragon, please. Oh my god. No, I, I'm trying to figure out what, what y'all had a link for something of the like the the animal. 
No, Whether... you, you've seen this. I thought this is what you're reading off of. Hold up. No, I, I was on Joe Chestnut's Wikipedia. Yeah, no, hold I, up. I, I'll click on the big text, Texan. Oh, hold on. Sickos can okay, well, well, Google's well, things. Oh, oh hold on. Well, can Michigan Google's things? I found things? it. We have a I statement it. from him. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I found it. Um, so, the unofficial record for all animals, including humans, was held by a 500 pound Siberian tiger yep. who ate the steak <laughs> in 90 wild. seconds in 1999 until bested by a lioness in 2012. In, did did at they go seconds. to the restaurant? Did they did they eat the potato? I I assume so that to get the record. Can, can we get like Mike the Tiger in here? Like please see if we can get him to take the uh big Texan steak challenge when like Texas plays at Death Valley. I love this. I love this so much. I love the idea. Remember, remember that old show where they would put up humans against like animals? Man versus Beast, I think it was called. This was a TV oh, show. I'm, I'm. I want to say. I want to say Joey Chestnut no, was I'm on there. No, I'm a commercial. Yeah. Uh, was it Man versus Beast? Or maybe it was Kobayashi. Oh yeah, Kobayashi lost an eating contest to a 1,000 pound Kodiak bear. <laughs> uh, Duh. He ate 31 bunless hot dogs in two minutes, compared to in 36 seconds, compared to the bear's 50. In a 2014 you know, interview, Kobayashi claims to have beaten the bear in rehearsal. <laughs> I love that the bear needed to rehearse for this. Like the bear, <laughs> the bear, like the first time the bear was like, I don't know. I'm not feeling this. Like, the bear got He's it. Locked down. in. Bear figured out how to eat them hot dogs. This was a show. This is a TV show, 2003. Yeah. Honestly, 50 to 38 is closer than I would expect from a, a bear. Mm -hmm. But a bear who doesn't know it's competing, right? This bear is not aware. He's just stoked to have these hot dogs. Yeah. I, I yeah. bet you in rehearsal, the bear was like sniffing it, like, what is this? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And then he's like, oh, it's hot dogs. This is delicious. If you're ready to go after practice. Anyways, we need more competitive competitions between humans sure. and animals eating things. If you wanna... I, either that or the bear was like showboating. Like the bear wanted oh, gotcha. like Kobayashi mm. to feel confident. Like, Lulling him into I got, I got you right security. where I want you. The, yep. the bear is like, you know. The bear hustled he, Kobayashi. Well, he knew it was rehearsal. <laughs> That's right. He knew. <laughs> the bear hustled Kobayashi. Bridget, the go bear ahead was, The bear was sandbagging. <laughs> exactly. Go, go ahead. And, go Saving ahead it all and... for the big state. Okay. So we have a statement from Impossible Foods. They say, we love Joey and support him in any contest he chooses. It's okay to experiment with a new dog. Meat eater <laughs> shouldn't have to be exclusive to just one wiener. So there you have it, folks. You have Impossible Foods saying it's okay to be monogamish with your wieners yes it's a pork polycule oh my god uh-huh uh-huh without any of the drama though man only I can't you in your and heart there's, there's only drama. you in your heart know that you've cheated on your impossible wieners with your mm -hmm. nathan's or even your ballpark franks he would he would Aren't Hebrew nathan's national all this all this i don't know talk well, I, pork, I don't know it's National I, I Back at Up Ash Up Day. What is today's day? Uh, it's it's no, uh, it's it, Back New That Orleans, Ass Up Day. It's, oh, yeah. it's Back That Ass Up Day uh, in honor of Juvenile's hit Back That Ass Up from 25 years ago. Uh, it, it has been dedicated that it is Back That Ass Up Day by the the mayor of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Seminal work. Seminal work. Nathan's hot dogs are in fact all beef. Okay, so this is a beef polycule. Okay. Oh, there we go. Beef polycule. Are you working with some beef? Yeah. <laughs> the last two weeks we started. Not, not nope. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm driving through. Driving it's through. Too. The last few weeks we've put up our some of our first non NCAA championship lists on Twitter and Instagram, things like that. We're gonna be doing this for the next couple of weeks as long as I still have events and just celebrating people that did awesome things. They don't always get the celebration. And folks, I put these up in the show notes. Let me know which ones you find the most interesting. Because our listeners, of course, always jump on to hip hop dance being a BYU thing. Yeah. Uh, well, like Weber State, too. So, like, the Weber State, like, I did, Utah. I, I cannot believe that Utah is like uh, the hip hop dance capital of the United States. <laughs> There's like, they can't. Everyone thought it was footloose. Nobody, nobody can deal with that. And that's every year because the BYU hip hop dance team is a 
freaking dynasty. Uh, I love the ones that, you know, we get the, the classic Western Kentucky is like a forensics dynasty, which mm-hmm. is like a debate speech type thing. And it, it's always fun to just imagine like, you know, Big Red as a detective, as we did last year. Solving uh, murders. In, in, in the wire scene where they just say nothing but the word fuck. Uh, solving a murder in, in wire season one and Big Red is there. Uh, but, you know, there's, I, I love when you get the, uh, the band folks get really excited for that. I think a lot, the most of the comments that we got was like Florida. What the hell were they baking? Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the drone racing Virginia Tech fans. They're really excited that they won like a national championship because I mean Virginia Tech. You know they they're hyped for that. Uh, people say it's bullshit that Notre Dame wins Gaelic football. That's unfair. Um, and I'm like, there's just like. You know, it's like Air Force skydiving. They're like, that's unfair. Uh, they're just like, that's, that's not fair. Like, who's going to do that? I, I think the most comments we got uh, were a lot of Tennessee fans excited they won dairy tasting. Yes, they were but very they excited. they had no idea what that entailed. Doesn't matter. The best part about being fans of this stuff is you can jump in and just be a super huge, you know, pro your team thing. You have to that's know what right. it does. Choosing to believe that dairy tasting is like walking up to a dairy cow and licking it. (laughs) See, I was imagining wine tasting, but you just have your little little, tiny little cups of milk. Swish Mm. it around. I I think that's what it actually is. Flavor nut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The one that I'm just imagining like how disgusting that feels after you spit the milk out. Your milk mouth feel. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Silky. The one that got everyone today was finding out that West Texas A&M won the meat judging contest. Ooh. Not Texas A&M, not Texas Tech, who's been a powerhouse the last 30 years, but West Texas A&M is their first national championship. Hell yeah. And so they're having big times out in Canyon. They did not win the lamb judging, though, subcategory. Mm. I think Oklahoma State won that. Mm. But yes, uh, West Texas A&M wins their first Meet judging national championship and everyone else is in shambles. Texas Tech fans are just absolutely be. coming apart. Yeah, they, they can't deal with it. Um, I, I, I noticed uh, Dayton won uh, Irish dance. Yes. Yeah, so I, I had, had questions text, about that. I had to text my dad uh, because he's a Dayton alum or alumnus. And I was like, Dayton won the national championship in Irish, Irish dancing. Congratulations. He just responds back, one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm, oh my like, I'm like, okay, whatever you say, Dad. I love text with your dad Such time. Dad dad. <laughs> yeah, text from your dad might be my favorite corner of our yeah. podcast. The, the, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll get those. We'll get those once we get football season rolling. Yes, 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 yes. I do get like random pirates texts, you know, but I, I don't bring those on the show. Uh, you know, he's just like, like he'll text me every now and like raise the Jolly Roger. Uh, you know, if, if the game finishes too early and he's like, like, he just, just random, no bullpen today. We'll see. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like okay, yeah, I have no damn idea right. what's going on. Damn right. Yeah, that's right. Love it. Uh, Kamish, I'm going to need to tell, need you to share with the class how you feel about the current water skiing champion. I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy about it, honestly. Um, ULM has been sitting on 29, uh, water skiing championships and they have not won one for a while now uh, and they'll break through because the Cajuns uh, apparently stole the coach from ULM. Oh my God. Um, I, I believe I'm not hundred percent sure, but they took like the ULM water skiing coach and now ULM is like finishing in like third and fourth, but they can't break through to get that 30th title. Uh, and now the Cajuns have just hit 10 titles they're still 19 away, but you know, I, I kind of hate this. It's just like, we got to find some way to break through to get that 30th because we've just been sitting on 29 for so long. I got to get that 30. It's just, it's just that it's an albatross around the Warhawks neck. Got to get there and got to, got to jump that water skiing. I don't also, know what we got to do. Ever- University of Alabama, like starting to also creep up on this too. Yeah. They're, they're they're, really good at this. Like people are starting to like, like fun this big time. And, and the fun thing about this is when I was at ULM, uh, my dorm 
was basically really, really close to the bayou. And you could see the water ski team practice. Like there was the jump that they had. You could see them on the bayou like practice. And it's just like, okay, like, oh, they're out there practicing again. And it's just he, on the bayou. And I'm like, this is this is crazy. And I'm like, what are they doing? But, I mean, it was weird. It's, it's just the thing that they do. And I'm like, I don't know who's just water skiing all the time and, in, in Monroe, but there's just water everywhere around Monroe, which I didn't really realize. Uh, and so kind of leaving there and I was like, there's and living in San Antonio. I was like, there's no water here. <laughs> there's water. Yeah, there's everywhere no, in no water there. It's crazy. None. Well, I think that's, oh, so we have more coming out. We have at least three more graphics. So if I haven't said yours yet, yell at me about it. Tell me all engagements, good engagement. I don't fucking care if it blows up our mentions. Or commission being like, oh, our mentions are shot for the day. Fuck you. Like, dude, You're just fine. let them know there's more coming. Nope. Nope. This is the last no, one. No, you just doing. like and yell I, at me. And I'm like, no. I forgot, I forgot your thing. Kill him. Like, we, ever gonna we had this holographic already. Nope. Doesn't matter. Damn I, it. If, if I don't have it on there, oh, I have forgotten about it. I've forgotten about your school. That's what I hate. Like, you are goldfish tweeting. And I'm like, we have the, we have everything set up already. Don't. Yeah. It's not, that's not goldfish tweeting. That's baiting. There's a very big difference. Jordan mm. craves clicks. Yes, mm. I do. He, clave, he craves mm. them. I do. I, like just, dopamine I, go up. Click, I click, can't click. stand the replies. Like just stop it. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to do tonight, folks, is for the last for our G four conferences. G four. I guess we're calling G4. it now. The Wheel of Costume Mascot Fights. Our last episode, we did the Big Twelve, and with the voting done, it turns out that Pistol Pete has won. Pistol Pete has one with the giant head. Apparently, the you know there's an he may be carrying a shotgun. Mm. Um, yep. From what I could see in some of the replies today, uh, so you know, Pistol Pete, Purdue Pete, Mrs. Wolf, and the Deacon uh, have advanced, and and now we are moving on to the SEC. And remember, our rules are that we are taking in the. Costumed mascot. Costumed mm-hmm. so mascot. Not, not if you have a if you have a no, human... like Uga is not fighting anybody. Right. No. Asterisk, if you have a horse or other animal that's super about it and has been penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct, that counts. Like if Uga's tried to bite an Auburn player before, that doesn't count. Uh but you know, again. I mean, I mean we we also like we saw Uga versus bevo yeah Ugga is extremely Bible. not about it but Ugga this does raise the bevo. question of if bevo counts no no because they have a, there's a costume bevo there's hook them the costume one it's called hus- there's hook them first round the kentucky wow i have no idea what that is versus i need to know what the other the kentucky mascot looks like hold up Oh, he's he's got the headband. Oh, that's the basketball version, but No, this kid I don't like this guy. I mean, Big Al's actually also pretty lame. You really? ever think I... about how like limp and floppy his trunk is? He could choke somebody with it. I really like Big Al though. Speak Big Al's a great him. mascot. Elephants are great. He uses too. his floppy trunk to to choke out the Kentucky Wildcat. I think that's fair. I mean, especially the Kentucky Wildcat looks a lot like we have Rock at home, and I'm not about that. I was going to say we have Cosmo at home, but yeah. Yeah. Elephants are underrated as deadly animals. I don't know why the Kentucky Wildcats tweeted this, but they tweeted uh, the Kentucky Wildcat mascot as Barbie. Okay. <laughs> how, how many months late? <laughs> I, no, this was a while ago. Like I just. Oh, I was gonna say. I was like, they're just now jumping uh, on that. Like, let, let me. It, it was in the search. Okay, because they did that with Miss Rev, but that was like yeah when Barbie was out. I don't. I don't like that their mascot is just called the Wildcat. Yeah. Like you don't even have like a name for the Wildcat. Can't be Willie or Wilbur. Those are all taken. Yeah, no. he doesn't even have an unofficial nickname like Eight Ball. No. No, there's. I don't hmm. know. I got I, Big Al is moving on for me. Okay, okay, I think Big Al too. You want have an argument against that? No. Okay. No. Next up, Big Red and Tusk. I'm gonna say, or 
Arkansas. Get both. Versus Harry Dog from UGA. Mm. How are we feeling? This is a good fight. This is a good fight. Hmm. I do enjoy the proportions of Harry Dog, I gotta say. That overly large head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they leaned in, like they know this is a mascot and they leaned into it. Wait, sorry, Tusk is the actual as the Tusk actual, is the actual one. Rabbit. Sorry, my bad. I yeah. was thinking about the inflatable Arkansas mascot. I, I do like Big Red. He does have the uh the feral hog energy. He does. Yeah. It is too bad that there are not thirty to fifty of them. <laughs> <laughs> there was more. Can we, okay, if I start looking about this like like Giga Chad, uh, like alpha male things, look at the chin on Harry Dog for me. That's a fucking alpha male chin right there. Is it? Yeah. Is it? He looks like Matt Gates. <laughs> who's who's fucking more alpha dog than Matt Gates? I was gonna say who's more cartoonish than. That is true. Yeah. <sighs> Ooh, I'm, Man, I'm really, I'm really torn here, y'all. There's, there's a spiked collar for Harry Dog, but you can't see it because his, his neck is so thick. Oh, I mean, it's on the back. That's you know, he's got a neck roll. Um, but then like, you know, the Arkansas mascot has like actual tusks in the front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. If we're talking about, okay, let's think about these as if they were actual animals fighting. I think oh, the, it's easily the, the hog wins it. Oh, the hog, yeah. the, the hog wins every time. So yeah. I, I think I have to go with the hog here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's the tusks that that get it do it for me. Yep. And the I, facial expression. It's it's the just slightly downturned eyebrows. Well, the ang- the angry eyebrows definitely do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll go with big red for that. Next up, <laughs> Mike the tiger from LSU versus. Yeah, it would be great if it's like another tiger. Kaki, oh. Oh. oh Kaki's boy. getting his ass kicked. Yeah, he I, is sorry. not su- he is not surviving. Yeah. He's a snack. As, as much as I love Oh my god. Kaki, Kaki is uh, just gonna be so many feathers. And this is this is costume Mike. But yeah, he's, this is still, costume he's Mike. still yeah. snacking costume on Kaki. Mike That's is how like... this works. Costume Mike is gonna trick you. You're gonna see him, and you're gonna think, "Oh, look at him! He he's not as ferocious as actual Mike the Tiger." And then you're dead. That's the last thing you ever think. Yep. Yeah, the LSU Tiger has like a surprisingly small mouth, but I don't think that matters here. No, I think no. I think he's still gonna just absolutely destroy Kaki. And look at how look- pointy his teeth are. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with we'll go with Mike. Yeah, Mike, Mike the Tiger's going through here. Oklahoma, we have Boomer and Sooner. Okay. I got to need to Versus see Versus Smokey from Tennessee. Boomer and Sooner are the really derpy looking horses. No. Yeah. It, it's derpy Smokey horses every day are an immediate fail for me. Oh my God, dude. Hi there. We're back to this again. Hi. They have big, like, open mouth smiles, too. And it, the creepy teeth. It's the creepy teeth. <laughs> so just, oh, we, we double They're just going to gum you to death. They're going to gum you to death. <laughs> Meanwhile, Smokey will just drive you mad with coonhound energy. Ask me how I, I know. Like, I feel like Smokey's pretty well dressed. Like, there's a lot of pictures of Smokey where he's wearing like a jacket. Oh, yeah. Like slacks. It's still orange, but like, it's it's a look. Oh, I like him in oh, the yeah. briefs, too. They color coordinate. <laughs> the the checkered well. board speedo for Smokey. Yeah, oh mm-hmm. yeah I'm going to have to. Okay, I'm going to have to give this to Smokey, guys. <laughs> I would yeah, also. I, I agree. I would like to take this moment to issue a challenge to whoever it is who designs collegiate mascot mascots and potentially also all the furries out there to make a horse mascot that doesn't look like a complete fucking dumbass because I have yet to see one. They're it's all true. terrible. So they're clear. all so bad. You, you were the first one to bring up furries this episode, not me. Just I so know. we're clear. That was yes. not on me this time. All right. You can't Fine. have the mouth open. It's the open mouth that makes it. Oh, I did. I, I, I think, I think my dumbassery. favorite like horse mascot is has got to be like Boise State's. Yes, because it, the mouth is just so wide open. 
It's it's ridiculous. Like he also the Bronco. looks really dumb. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at, I'm looking back at the SMU one now just to make myself laugh. <laughs> just, yeah, uh Smokey's taking down Boomer and Sooner. But, <laughs> Hi but, there. Uh, Hi. Hi. Can, can we please appreciate the Boise State's mascot's <laughs> official Wikipedia picture which oh, I have okay. just posted in the chat? Oh god. Oh god. That is a like last scene photograph. I had <laughs> like great last note. <laughs> It was taken in a fucking spy camera from a hundred yards out. Why is it Let's so see if bad? I can find my favorite photo. I think I have it saved on my phone, but it's it's Buster the Bronco and he has binoculars. I got to see if I can find that. Like the Boise State Bronco with binoculars. I think I have it saved. I'm trying to find it, but we can keep moving on to the next round while I try to hunt. All right, for I this. will. Yeah, I'll keep moving on. Okay, next up. Pulling the Bulldog from Mississippi State versus Mr. Commodore from Vanderbilt. Like he's just known as Mr. Commodore? I believe mm-hmm. so. That's it? Yeah. Yep. For, for such a like, serious school, you'd think he'd earn a doctorate. Dr. Mr. Commodore? <laughs> like a Commodore is not like a rank? It is. But this is Mr. Commodore. Yeah, th- in this case, Commodore is his last name. Uh, point of order, Mississippi State evidently is one of the teams that now has a pair of mascots. They have Bully and Bell. Oh, okay. 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 We'll count both of them then. Bully and Bell. I will post a picture in the chat. Oh, they're kind of adorable. They, they are, are kind of what, adorable. Very cute. Once again, how do you know it's a girl? Eyelashes. That's all you can do to make it a girl. And a flower. Add, I, this one has a flower. I it's do like jowl. how they look more like actual bulldogs. Yeah. Too. Like they got the mm-hmm. jowls. They're very Instead cute. of the like oversized chin, it's the jowls. Mm-hmm. Like that's what makes yeah, like he's so good as a, as a coon hound mascot because he's got the big oversized hound mouth. Uh, Uga's got that Cybertruck head. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh God. Cyber Uga. Oh my god. That's what's gonna happen when they have to take out his lungs and put in put in electronic ones. This Uga will last at some point they're gonna make a Reveille that lives forever. We know that, right? It's it's gonna be how like do we those, know they're not already what is it, it, Boston Dynamics dogs? Where yeah. it's like, oh, we made a we made a robot that can jump on you like a dog. Isn't that pretty cool? Like that's not horrifying Isn't at all. Isn't that horrifying? Yeah. <laughs> Although I guess if if Uga's more Cybertruck then like, make sure you don't get him wet. Uh, very fragile, breaks easily. So, yeah, I'll go. Don't, don't feed him after midnight? Yeah. Yep. Lots of lots of stuff. So, Cybertruck, I'll go. Not a fan. I think that these Mississippi State Bulldogs is the- are better. But I still feel like, I don't know, like the Commodore just being a person. I feel like if it was any other mascot going up against, I'd be like, maybe give a shot. But I feel like dogs like people. No, I don't know. This is a this is a fancy lad. This fancy lad doesn't know. It's shit. also they they call him Mr. Commodore, and all I can hear in my head is Mr. Manager from Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. I just can't take him seriously. I, I would I, agree. His face doesn't encourage you to take him seriously. No, either. that's what exact nothing about him says take me seriously. I am a fearsome mascot. I'm, and I mean nothing about uh, bully does either. But no. I know what I'm getting with Bully. Bully's a bulldog. Okay, no, here, here's something, though. Some of these pictures I'm seeing of Mr. Commodore, he has a sword. So. Mm. Uh, but that, that feels like accoutrement, right? Like, He's a fancy I, lad. Does I'm he know how to sh- use the I'm sword? No, sure it's, 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 ornamental. The it's ornamental. Ornamental at best. Well, I mean, you know, the Mississippi State mascot's definitely going to have a cowbell. Okay. To like yeah. smack something, you know. I was gonna I say mean, bludgeon you with, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and those cowboys are serious. Like they're not like mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. just a small handle. They're like the ones that, you know, the the ones Family with the serious handle. You know, this is not artisanal cowbells. Not no. not the traveling cowbell. Though it's the one you take to the home games. That's right. That's the that's the fine cowbell. I, I'm gonna go for bully and bell here. Yeah, I I gotta lean the the bulldogs. I 
if if it was like a different name besides Mr. Commodore, maybe I would give the <laughs> the nod. But right. like, like right. Mr. doesn't necessarily like like Captain Commodore. I'm like, yeah, I'm there. You got it. Or the, you know? or the Commodore. The. Yes. Or the Commodore. I mean, I don't care. Call him Commodore 64. I don't give a crap. <laughs> Call him Commodore call Matthew him... Perry and bring it back to the the quote unquote opening of Japan, right? Like Mr. literally Mr. anything but Mr. Commodore. Uh, can I, yeah, sh- I can I show you an actual older version of Mr. Commodore? Oh god. Yes. I I'm, I'm not sure yes, that please. I want you to. Oh god. He used to be a way, he used to be an old ass man. I mean, this is horrifying, oh. right? But I think Actually, I like this one better. I know. I, I was just saying, I think compelling. I like this better. Yeah. Grumpy, yeah. grumpy old man more, Commodore. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got a cursed face, but at least I'm intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. This this one I would consider picking in, in the fight against Bully and Bell. The other yeah. one, nah. No. Nah. Nothing nah. interesting about him. Burn. Nothing compelling about him. Yeah. Um, I would like to take this moment also to, Jesus Christ, what is that? <laughs> what what am I what looking at? Is. It's a dude in like painted himself gold, jumping I on old Mr. Th- Commodore. I don't know what it is. I have questions and I don't want answers. My no. only love is the sea and this random gold guy next to me. Oh, that's the old man from the old man. Here we go. That's the, the it and the super ego. That's it right there. Here we go. This is actually three people who want who are who are Mr. Commodore in 2008. Here's a quote from the article: The three faces of Mr. C are Sam Newman in gold, Mike Fagan Fagan in black. And a third student who prefers to hide behind the anon- anonymity of the Commodore mask. <laughs> they only love me when I wear the mask. No one knew who I was before I put on the mask. Now it's Commodore, but he's talking in Bane voice only. <laughs> oh, that scoreboard is falling a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I guess Vanderbilt football really was born in the darkness and molded by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to be fair, like we've seen the state of their stadium. They, Probably blew some stuff up there. It Next did, up. They blew up the end zone. The old Miss. Oh, God. No. Uh, I was like, I have no idea what they have now. Albert. Albert wins. Uh, ever- yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the mail for Ole Miss. Get, no, no the on, Gator Hang wins. on. Doesn't, doesn't Ole Miss have the land shark now? Not anymore. I don't know what they the have. Land shark no, is not anymore. They got rid of it. They got rid of everything. Wait, they got rid of it. Yeah. Oh well, mm. no, the 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 admittedly shitty AI overview from Google says that the land shark is the current mascot. Okay, the land shark is also horrifying, and I, is I it the like bear? yeah, it is. It was the bear. The bear got discontinued in eight, in twenty eighteen, according to again okay. shitty Google. Oh no, Wikipedia also uh, discontinued mascot was the mascot from 1979 until 2003. He was replaced mm-hmm. in 2010 with the black bear who was replaced with Tony, the land shark in 2018. Uh, he has not, he has not been officially removed as the school mascot, but has not been seen since May, 2021. He is okay. missing in action. So and they therefore Florida the wins by default. Yeah. Can we, can we give old miss Admiral Akbar like the uh, <laughs> internet tried to do? And, and then you throw him a bad into time a room. To take a sip of my drink. You throw him into a room with the Florida Gator mascot, and he just goes, "It's a trap." Yep, that's it. That's all well, he does. It, it is. It's over. Good luck with that. Good luck with that Gator, Akbar. Next up, I just watched the new Bad Boys. They fight a Gator in that. Bobby, a word winning Bobby, the Auburn Tiger. Okay. Versus... Texas is saying it's nothing. <laughs> Bobby advances. Bobby <laughs> advances. He earned a buy. He's oh. pretty great. Yeah. And then the last one's going to be Truman the Tiger versus Hook'em, the Texas Longhorn. Mm. Now, Truman has won a national championship this year. That's Truman's right, national pretty championship. doofy looking, Truman. I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what his expression is. Oh, he is kind of doofy looking, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Ooh. I do like I. I mean, I like Hook'em a lot, but I'm I might have to recuse myself from this one. <laughs> yeah, he looks. Truman Truman has Truman has an even smaller mouth than the Mike the Tiger mask. Yeah, yeah. and it's like a, ooh ooh ooh. Like Truman Truman is trying to whistle at you. Okay, I'm gonna ooh. have to I'm, guys. Hook, Hook'em is <laughs> Truman the is the here. Chappelle show. Let me holla at you, but it's the Tiger mascot. <laughs> I'm afraid Hook'em is the answer here, y'all. 
No, I think you're right, and I don't think it's your bias speaking. No, I I don't think Truman's built to fight. Um, no, he, he's he's a lover, not a fighter, and that's all right. You he's know. built to love. Hookum definitely came to fight. Hookum's Hookum's got horns, and uh, yeah, uh, Hookum's advancing. It's it's not biased here. So no. here's what we have in round two: we have Big Al versus Big Red, Mike the Tiger versus Smokey. Bully and Bell the Bulldog versus Albert and Obby versus Hookup. Mm. Nice. Big Red versus Big Al first. Oh. Big Red versus Big Al. So Arkansas you know, versus Alabama. Alabama, you know, Big Al is kind of derp like, like that. It looks kind of slow with the floppy tongue. The floppy tongue, floppy nose. Floppy. Floppy trunk. Floppy, floppy trunk. trunk. But Big Red, you know, has the horns. Like big I mean, red. So does does Big Al get any sort of like size advantage for being an elephant versus a hog? I don't think so. It, I think the sizes okay, they are. Just, okay, the sizes they are. I mean, you'd have to go with. You'd have to go with Big Red then. I think. Yeah, because well, yeah, Big Red has the the tusks, and Big Al does not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Big Al is tuskless and has mm-hmm. a limp trunk. Could could Big Al use his trunk as a garrote? He tried that once, and I feel like in the second round, people are going to be aware of that attempt. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The opponents That's... are going to be like, all right, that was a good trick once, but you one used time. it already. Right. One trick pony. Right. And it's oh, not like he can just sit on you. And no. Yeah. Okay. Big Red it is then. Big Red, Arkansas, moving on to the final four. How about Mike the Tiger versus Smokey? Ooh, I got, see, I I got like Mike. I, 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 got I still Mike. give it to Smokey, but that's Ooh. me. I'm on the fence about this one because I feel like Smokey's probably pretty crafty. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just seeing the way Smokey's dressed, like, that has me convinced. Would Smokey be a good James Bond? Like, a next James Bond? No, because I think Smokey is too... Okay, so I, I on my flight back from Japan, I watched this movie where Pierce Brosnan does a southern accent. It's called Fast Charlie. He's like a fixer for organized crime in Biloxi. Oh, and this is a real movie. Yeah. This is a real movie. Yes, yes, it's called I, Fast Charlie. Yeah. Um, that's that's who Smokey would be. Like, still very suave, like competent at the whole action thing, but like in Biloxi, not. Not in London on Her Majesty's Secret Service. See, it's funny that you say that because I was envisioning Smokey as Daniel Craig in Knives Out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that, that's a yeah. good fit. That's All a right. good fit. I'm going to make that- one final pitch for Mike the Tiger. Look at his eyes. Stare into his eyes. Oh, those are those are real piercing eyes. Mm. Mm. This is a compelling point. Does he have crazy eyes? So, it's kind of I, crazy. I want you to look at Smokey's eyes as well. He's got the big old droopy eyes. It's true. My, Mike's eyes are not quite as crazy as eight balls, for no. example. But no. he's, he's got thoughts in there. He just hasn't done as nearly as much coke. Oh, I mean, he's he's naturally crazy. Yeah. Naturally Louisiana crazy. Uh, I'm going to have to go just Mike on this him. one, I think. I think I'm going to go with Mike here. Smokey's eyes are too soft. He's yeah. done for. It was a good run for Smokey, though. I, I hope he can maybe survive and, and have a nice retirement in Biloxi, solving solving murders or whatever. Smokey's eyes look like look like he's tired. Yeah. Yeah, like you just look I at him, he's like, okay. Like I've 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 gone through so much. I, I don't know if I can deal with the, the craziness uh and the unpredictability of Mike the Tiger because Mike the Tiger has a lot of costume changes like consistent ridiculous costume changes i mean there there I'm there was <laughs> jordan what is this oh no that's what smoky used to look these? like that's what smoky used to look like look at the middle one oh, the middle God. one's my absolute favorite oh boy you could see more of the face it looks like someone's wearing a smoky mask like smoky consumed someone both of the early smokies are incredibly cursed holy shit Evolution is right, Jesus. Yeah, there's a big evolution there. Show me. I'm gonna show you this, and then tell me God still exists. 
we have last round. Oh, sorry, two more rounds. Bully and Belle the Bulldog versus Albert the Gator. I think there's I, a Mrs. It's, Albert too. It's the Gator, Albert, Albert. It's, it's okay. Albert, and there's a woman Gator. Uh, oh, there is. Her name oh, there is. Is it Allie? Alberta. Alberta. Al- of course, Alberta. 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 Yeah, I she mean, has lipstick. Of course, does she have the eyelashes too? Yeah, she has uh, eyelashes too. Yep. Yeah, she does. she does. Yeah, that's a that's right. I, I mean, I mean, because it's a two on two match, Gators win this one. Like, Gators oh, over Bulldogs. Sure. Like that's. Yeah, Alberta especially. She's she's coming in off the top rope. Yeah, I think this is right. I was I was going to try and propose some sort of like wife su- wife swap switch situation here, but I don't see it happening. <laughs> that's, oh, no, Alberta's that's way not- too wily. <laughs> Once again, an, anthro- an anthrocon bar has looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're at Anthrocon and you see a male alligator walking away with a female bulldog, and then the other direction, a male bulldog walking away with a female alligator. <laughs> you see them leaving the bar like that. That is. Oh. Y'all have a good night. God. <laughs> yep. Yif on. Yif on. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Avi versus Hook'em. Where are we going with Avi versus Hook'em? You know, we haven't had a lot of discussion of mascots who might be capable of utilizing cartoon physics in this particular round of mascots. Right. Avi? I thinking? would I would like to posit that Avi is the cartoon physics mascot here. I would like to switch that with Avi in slacks and a polo shirt. But he has so many other costumes. He He's been an angel before with like beautiful wings and a halo. I, I don't know why, but that Slacks and Apollo mascot is somehow like unsettling to me. It really is, right? Like that's uh-huh. that's like that's like the Kansas State mascot level of unsettling where it's like, man, like <laughs> that's a what is that? That there. that can't be yeah, that can't be real. That's messing with my brain. I've got stolen valor obby in camo. Mm. See, that makes sense. I buy that. Right, that it's it's. I think it's the rugby stripes on the shirt. It's doing something weird, though. Exactly. Okay, so I, I'm Abby, going to give you the cartoon things on Abby here. Yeah, I am about to post. Look, Abby can fly. <laughs> okay, yeah, Bebo never does shit. <laughs> Hook him never does shit like that. I like Abby on this one. Abby has low level shape shifting. I feel like like yeah, Hook em all, all all Hookem does is is basically throw the horns. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, that's all Hookem does. That's all Hookem does. Maybe takes off the hat for the uh, national anthem, which I have a photo on my uh, phone of that. Uh, I do love that. But it, it look at all like suspect. Like, oh my god, are they supposed to see me with my hat off? Um, but yeah, I I got Abby's. Abby reminds me of of. Like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I can see him. I can see Obby bouncing. I can see him. I can see him bouncing everywhere uh, uh, using his tail, uh, like unpredictably. So um, I think that's our final four. Uh, I do have something incredibly cursed to post in the chat before oh, we wrap everything let's up. Do it. Oh, dear. oh, God. What is that? Oh, is that it's a puppy. puppy. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that a puppy, <laughs> puppy costume, an Obby puppy costume. Oh, that's that's there's just something really off-putting about this particular picture of it. Yeah. Oh god. What? I don't know. I think it's cute. I like, I like it. The dog is cute. It's the fact that the arms stick out. That's giving. Because <laughs> like... it's like it's skin dobby. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like, so our, if our... it was just the ears, like the little like tiger ears kind of thing yes. going on, I'm all for it. If it's the, if it's got that with the little auburn shirt, I'm into it. It's the arms that stick out uh, in addition to the yes. feet that hang down. No, 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 no. So our final four are Big Red from Arkansas, Mike the Tiger from LSU, Albert and Alberta, Gator, and Obby from Auburn. We'll let our listeners vote on the final four. It, it's we weird. Should... Like the SEC didn't have any mascots with like weapons. I, 
right? Yeah, a strangely peaceable conference. Yeah, like the the conference. Big Twelve was the, way more loaded. The Big Twelve had guns, <laughs> a lot of guns, but the SEC not, not you know, no no guns. Maybe like you know, Mister Commodore <laughs> with with a sword, sword or something. Like Oklahoma Commodore. has guns that we excluded, right? Well, I feel like the there's like the guy with the shotgun riding on the schooner sooner. No, yeah, that's they don't like, shoot they the have guns. a squad that shoots the guns in the end zone. Yeah, okay. Which was loud as hell in the Alamo Bowl. Uh, which is the cows. <laughs> well, same, same thing, like, Hookham doesn't shoot the cannon off. No. Yeah. It, it's, it seems like the SEC like, prides themselves on the actual live mascots. Yeah. Compared mm-hmm. to their costume mascot version. Oh yeah, uh, the SEC is easily like our most live mascot conference. Yeah, especially especially I think they're the ones that are hanging on to them the most. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because they're like oh, most of them in the other conferences, they've either gotten rid of them or they're like normal animals that you can have as a pet. Y'all, SEC I think pretty much the only one that's still like three. hanging uh, on. I need Ralphie sh- says hi. <clears throat> yeah, I, I need to show you guys the what Ole Miss tried to do for the logos for Ole Miss shark. Cause you need to see Grove attire shark in a, in a blazer and a striped tie. Drop, drop a red cup in his hand. Oh, Grove yes. attire. That's what it's missing. I mm-hmm. like how this is framed as Grove attire and not frat boy. You, you re- but you repeat yourself, ma'am. You repeat. Yourself. I do. Okay, folks. That's all we got for tonight. Bridget, thank you for joining us. And happy to be here. And as always, we will see y'all on the other side. This episode is brought to you in part by Purina. Purina is dedicated to creating richer lives for pets and the people who love them. From helping older pets think like their younger selves to making cat ownership a possibility for more people than ever. Purina is helping pets thrive so they can live long, healthy, and happy lives. Purina has you covered for all your furry friends' needs, whether they meow or bark. From litter to treats to their best-in-class, nutrient-packed food with taste your pets will love. Purina's got your back at every stage of your pet's life. Your pet gives you the joy of the spring sunshine all year round. So today and every day, care for your pet with Purina. Your pet is Purina's passion. To learn more, head to Amazon.com backslash Purina.